Hello and welcome to thesignaxis.com. I'm Stefan and today I've got a PlayStation Classic to unbox for you. If you weren't aware, then this is Sony's foray into the whole mini retro console market. And they've miniaturized the PlayStation hardware. Well, to be honest, they've put in different bits and bobs and stuck an emulator on there. And then they've also put on 20 games, which you can check out on the back. Now, I'm sure that looking at this, let's get this into focus. Looking at this list, I'm sure that there's tons and tons and tons of classic PlayStation games that you're thinking, oh, why isn't that on there? Well, unfortunately, the realities of having to re-license the games, there's music licenses that will have run out over the last 20 odd years as well. And so there's a lot for Sony to contend with in order just to get 20 games onto their console. It's not quite as easy for them as it was for Nintendo and the SNES Classic Mini and the NES Classic Mini. So let's get this out of the box and throw this on the floor. And on the inner box, then you've got the more modern black on white PlayStation logo, which is kind of to be expected. But you do have plenty instances of the old rainbow PlayStation logo all over the place, really. What's that? That is the manual, but honestly, who reads manuals? So here is the PlayStation Classic itself, and let's get it out of the box and out of the plastic wrapping to have a better look at it. That also goes onto the floor. So as you can see, they've really done a great job of just miniaturizing this. It is kind of just about the size of the palm of my hand here. They've also got a really nice feel on the three buttons that you have on it. These depress really, really nicely, and they've got a good sound to them as well. I really like that. They've got the sound and the feel of those things absolutely right. On the front then, you've got two USB ports up against the fake memory card slots. There's no memory cards, although it would have been pretty cool if they had SD card slots there instead. You've got the ribbing on the side. On the back then, you've got the HDMI port there for video, which is 720p, so pretty much any TV can do it from the last decade and a half almost. And you've got micro USB for power. I don't think there is a power brick included. Now, going back to these buttons, power turns it on and off, obviously. You've then got the reset button, which takes you back to the main menu and lets you switch between the games. And you've also got the open button. Now, on the original console, this would obviously have flipped open the tray at the top, but there's no need for that in this case because everything's just on the onboard memory. Instead, the open button is there for the handful of games on the system, which include Metal Gear Solid and Final Fantasy VII. I think those might actually be the only two instances but you've got these games that do have multiple discs in reality, and so they're copying that across to this system and the functionality that that needs with the open button there. So let's snack this up against the SNES Classic Mini or whatever it was called. Let's just call it a mini SNES basically. And yeah, you can see they're actually surprisingly close in size. That is really surprising for me. I thought that this would be quite a bit smaller. I don't know why, I can't remember how they compare in reality, but that's that was my impression. You can also see that it's a little bit taller as well, the Snares Mini, which is another slightly unexpected trait. But then on the front, where the PlayStation has got the USB ports and they've just like, they don't really care too much about it. Here you've got uh, Nintendo's uh, Wii remote connector port thingy, whatever they called it, I can't remember. So let's put this over to one side and then delve into the rest of the box of goodies, which is gonna include controllers and cables basically. I do really like the box that Sony have designed for this thing. That's definitely one of the highlights of opening this up. Well, almost. There we go, out it comes, and onto the floor it goes. So then, you've obviously got a HDMI cable, you've got a micro USB cable, obviously for the power, and then you've got one controller, and two controllers. So that's everything that comes in the box. Get rid of the things we don't really need anymore. 
and here is the PlayStation controller, the classic original PlayStation controller. Now again, obviously it's gonna have a USB port on the end. So there's the USB and there's around about two meters of cable there. I think it's about two meters, don't quote me on that though. This though, the whole controller is really, really ridiculously light. And also it just feels absolutely spot on. All of these buttons have got just enough give. They don't have any of the kind of pressure sensing nonsense that the PlayStation 2 had. There's just enough like little wobble and give in them that just feels spot on. It's, most, it's like they've almost had like just a warehouse just full of these things, just waiting for this opportunity to use them. And so we turn to the games and scrolling through the list, it does tick a lot of boxes. The biggest games on this console are Metal Gear Solid and Final Fantasy VII, maybe Siphon Filter if you're of that particular age. Ubisoft is represented by Rayman and Rainbow Six, then there's Tekken 3, the original GTA, Ridge Racer 4, Resident Evil Director's Cut. It reminds you that there were just so many great games on the PlayStation. And they've also made room for games like Wild Arms, Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo, and Revelations Persona, which is actually a real surprise. Not to mention the bizarre first-person platforming of Jumping Flash, which I played for a good 10-15 minutes, and I have got no idea what is going on in that game. Game. It's certainly not one that I personally played in the 90s. But when a system like this is pushing close to the £100 barrier, it's 90 quid or $100 in the US, it's really depending on the games that are on the system. And the PlayStation Classic sadly does come up short in this. Yes, there is a lot of classic stuff on there, but there's also a ton of missing games. You don't have Gran Turismo, you don't have Roll Cage, where is Spyro, Crash, Tomb Raider? With recent new games, remakes, remasters, those three in particular are very, very current. And it's such a surprise not to see them here. I mean, you just have to look at the PlayStation 4 to find that many of the missing but no less iconic games are available to download and play on PlayStation 3, PlayStation Portable or PS Vita. Now, not all of this is going to be Sony's fault. Original publishers have gone bankrupt, the rights to reproduction can have been lost completely over time to the extent that nobody knows where the licenses and rights are held. And you've also got music and vehicle licenses from the dawn of disc-based video games, which will be an almighty pain to renew for certain titles. That is the big reason why we don't have Gran Turismo, for example. The actual emulation itself is pretty good. It's one-to-one -one, basically, that is all that Sony have really gone for. Inside the box is a mobile ARM chipset, running games through the open source emulator PCSX Rearmed. And in that regard, it's a very similar, potentially even identical setup to the SNES and NES Mini that Nintendo produced. But again, this is a one-to-one -one emulation, so there's no running these games at a higher resolution, there's no anti-aliasing, no enhanced texture filtering, it's just a straight-up emulation. And that is great from one point of view, but when these games were from the dawn of 3D, and they were running as low as 244p on small CRT screens that are now being blown up to TVs a dozen times bigger, you can feel that time gap a lot more than you would do with the 2D pixel art that the NES and SNES lent upon. A lot of these games do actually hold up rather well despite the aliasing and Ridge Racer 4 in particular looks really good actually. But given the possibilities that 3D emulators offer to clean up the games being presented, it's a shame that those opportunities haven't been taken. You also get this bare bones feeling from the system software itself. You've got this just carousel through which you scroll to one game to the next, and each game has been given its own dedicated memory card, so you've got no worries there when it comes to making sure that you can save in Final Fantasy VII or Resident Evil or whatever. On top of that, every time that you back out with a reset button, it will make a snapshot save, which means that you can just dive straight back in to that exact point again, and skip any loading screens, any splash screens that start the games, and so on. However, looking back at the SNES Mini, you actually had four snapshot saves that you could make. On the PlayStation Classic, you only get one per game, which is a bit of a disappointment. Similarly, there's just none of the kind of chrome that you often get in these kind of retro emulators. You don't have any backgrounds that can replace the black borders around the game, which the SNES has got tons and tons of, and you don't have options with regard to like the video scaling if you want it to be a one-to-one, -one, or even to throw on some CRT scan lines if you really want to go very retro. 
so yes, it's pretty solid emulation, but it's just got absolutely no frills, and that is really quite a disappointing thing. Given the price, if you've got a PlayStation 3, PSP, PS Vita, or actually a PlayStation TV, you might get a bit more mileage from a trip to the PlayStation Store instead of picking this up. Of course, this is really meant as a stocking filler for Christmas, and there's just enough nostalgia to warrant that, I feel, even if it does feel a bit dear at 90 quid, and you'll be thinking of all of the classics that didn't turn up to the party instead of the ones that you're playing. You win. Alright, thanks a lot for checking out this video. That's all that we've got for you in this. Uh, you can also head over to the sixthaxis.com where we've got our written thoughts and impressions on the console and what it offers. Hopefully you have found it useful and interesting. And, and if you have, then please do like, subscribe and share. I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Goodbye!